everyone, leave it like Lisa here and I have another keto update for you guys today. Today I will be talking about all the types of savoury snack foods that are keto friendly and the types of things that I've been enjoying while I'm doing my journey. So I'm not going to talk too long because quite a lot of the talking is to do with the snack food. So let's just jump straight into it. All right, so I'm just going to share with you some savoury snack foods that are easily and readily available when you're doing keto. Now, typically keto works because you're not snacking between meals. So the whole idea of keto is to not have your insulin levels spiking all the time throughout the day. Now your insulin levels will go up every time you eat something or drink something, basically. I mean, except for water, but yeah, if, if anything that's got calories in that you eat or drink, your insulin levels will go up to help absorb that food. So when you're doing keto, ideally you want your insulin levels spiking as little as possible throughout the day. And that is why keto is often combined, well, is mainly combined with intermittent fasting. Because you basically, when you're eating keto or low carb foods, you tend not to be as hungry. So you don't need to eat every couple of hours as you would with a traditional diet what a lot of the doctors recommend while you're eating carbs and stuff like that because when you're eating carbs especially carbs that spikes your insulin levels very highly and the like the rising and the dropping of the insulin levels is what creates your hunger so when those insulin levels drop dramatically that's when you start getting hungry again so typically when you're doing low carb eating your insulin levels aren't going up and down as crazily as they would when you're eating carbs. So that is why you often don't have as many hunger pains or you don't feel as hungry when you're doing a low carb diet. So when I'm saying I've got some snack foods here, these are typically not the types of things that you'd be eating between meals. So what when I use these sort of foods, is if I don't actually feel like making a big dinner or having a big dinner, I may just snack on a couple of these foods in place of my dinner. If I'm having taking lunch with me, I will take some of these foods as my lunch. So it's not something, when you're doing keto or low carb, you're not typically having breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, snack. You're, you're pretty much eating as few times throughout the day as you're comfortable. Now for me personally, I tend to just, if I eat breakfast, then I tend to go all the way through until dinner time. I don't tend to be hungry then throughout the day. But if I don't eat breakfast, I will try and, when I wake up, I'll try and hold off until about lunchtime, then eat something for lunch and then eat dinner later on. So I'm typically eating roughly between one and two times a day. So these, when I'm classing them as snack foods, it's definitely not something that you eat in between your meals because you don't want to be constantly eating throughout the day. So like I said, I will just use these in place of a, a, a meal. So if I don't have anything substantial to, for lunch, I will take some of these and have it as my lunch. All right, so I just wanted to explain that prior to going on because yeah, I mean, it, the whole point of keto is to not snack in between your main eating times. So um, that's what I just wanted to make clear before I share my snack type foods. So the types of things that you are able to eat when you're doing keto or a low carb diet uh, let's start with the main category first. Now, also, I just wanted to point out what the way I'm doing this keto or low carb journey is I'm trying to stick to as natural products as possible. Like I try not to eat too much processed type foods or uh, I've seen a lot where people are making keto bread and keto biscuits and keto cakes and stuff like that like for me personally I'm staying away 
from that sort of stuff as much as possible and just sticking to basic foods like like you can see here your deli meats yes they are processed as such but um how can i explain it like i'm not using any artificial sugars like i'm trying to steer clear of any sort of artificial sugars and artificial foods um, that your body i mean for my body anyway doesn't really agree with so most of the snack stuff i'm showing you here is close to natural i mean obviously pork crackles they are processed and not natural but if you know what i mean anyway so i'm not making keto bread i'm not eating keto biscuits or anything like that that this these are the main sort of foods that i'm sticking to so we've got here ham off the bone now most of this stuff is actually from aldi and i've found aldi is actually very good not only for the price like a lot of this stuff is a lot cheaper than normal supermarkets but it is a lot lower in carbs as well um, I'm finding a lot of the hams that you're getting in Coles and Woolies now tend to have quite a lot of carbs, believe it or not. So if you have a look at this one here, ham off the bone, per like I like to look at per 100 grams as well as per serve. So per 100 grams, there's only 1.4 grams of carbs. Now, a lot of the Woolies and uh, Coles branded hams are getting up to the three and four grams of carbs each. So uh, for 100 grams, the main thing you got to look for is how many carbs per serve and how big your serve is and then how many per 100 grams. So for per 100 grams, I try to keep everything under five, five maximum. If anything's over five per 100 grams, I steer clear of it normally, um, depending on how much of it is a normal serving size. So um, let's say, for example um like this seaweed okay so this seaweed here this has got 29.9 grams per 100 grams so that's massive like normally you would never eat that but this whole thing is how heavy is this i think it's like five grams yeah this whole thing is five grams so your total carbs in this whole packet is 1.5 so you see what I mean? Like, yes, it's high in carbs per hundred, but you're not, you'd never eat a hundred grams of seaweed. Like you're literally eating that whole packet is only one gram. So they're the things you need to look out for if you're new to, to this and you've never really looked at the carbohydrate, uh, carbohydrate content on foods before. Those are the two things you need to look at is your carbohydrates per serving and what exactly that serving size is. So 50 grams, this is probably going to be roughly one slice of ham is in this. So they've got this whole packet 1.75 and it looks like it's got about five, maybe four or five slices. Oh wait, one, four slices. So if you divide your 175 by four, that would be um, how, how heavy each slice is going to be. So that's another little tip for you guys. So yeah, ham off the bone, very good. Serrano ham, this is like a prosciutto meat. Again, only 0.4 of a gram of carbs per serve or one gram per 100 grams. Um, any of these sort of meats are really good. I also try and stay away from the salami type meats like Danish salami and all that sort of thing because they do tend to have a lot of additives in them as well. Whereas these are just mainly like a smoked type or cured type meat. So you'll find there'll be a lot less um, carbs in each of those. Uh, they are a bit more expensive than your regular salamis, but you know what? Like your health, sometimes you need to pay more at the outset instead of paying for a lot of medication later on so <laughs> that's the sort of way i look at it so you've got your smoked trout and smoked salmon again very low in carbs very very good for you less than one gram per 100 grams so that whole trout if you eat the whole thing is only one gram of carbs and pretty much the salmon would be the same less than one gram per 100 grams so all of these sort of smoked meats really really good most cheeses again all really good these are the ones i like to use uh, these are new ones from aldi as well you can get different flavored cheeses so we've got just your havarti deli slices here 
Again, very low in carbs. Um, these Colby ones I like to use to make a cheese crackers with. So uh, you actually, I'll, I'll show you uh, later on in the video how I actually make those. So they're all pre-sliced. I like using those. These ones are from Aldi as well. These are quite nice. They're a bit of a flavoured cheese. So we've got the chipotle and the habanero, a little bit of a spicy flavour to them. They're a little bit higher in carbs, but again, you don't have a lot of it when you do. I mean, you're not going to eat the whole block of cheese all to yourself. You probably only slice a few slices off and have it with some meat. And yeah, that's a, a nice little small meal in itself when you're not really hungry. Camembert and Brie, they're also really low in carbs and quite good. Uh, I, they're my sort of favourites. I like those. Cheese sticks, cheese stringers, these are really low in carbs. I haven't got the packet with me anymore, but these are really good for on the go snacks as well. Just your pro, I mean, they're processed cheese, but they're all right. They're not too bad for carbohydrate content. Also your mini baby bell cheeses. These are the originals and these are the cheddar version ones. They are again, very low in carbs. So less than, Serving size is 20 grams, so you've got less than one gram per serving. So again, and same with the Laughing Cow, this is more of like a cream cheese. They're very low in carbs as well. So all these food labels, these are your Bible when you're doing low carb and you're not familiar with what carbs are in it. Now these are quite high in carbs, like, well, 6.5 grams per 100. But if you only have one of them, that's one gram of carbs. So, you know, if you're not familiar, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much right now. I pretty much know what things have got carbs and what, what don't. So I don't always look at the labels, but especially with the deli meats, it is a good idea to do that because some of them are quite high and you wouldn't think that they would be. So that's cream cheese. That's really nice to have with your smoked salmon. Again, low in carbs. Um, also from Aldi is some sliced chicken breast. So this is like proper chicken breast that's just been sliced, not really the processed variety. And again, very low in carbs. So this whole packet has got maybe about one gram of carbs, if that. And that's really nice. You can warm that up or just have it cold like here on a salad with some avocado. That would be a perfect meal, like a you know well-balanced meal with some avocado, chicken slices and salad. That actually looks delicious. Might have one, one of those. I might make myself one of those after this. Um, now, for other sort of savoury, snacky type foods, <laughs> as you can see, these don't last long in our house macadamia nuts roasted and salted these are very low in carbs as far as nuts go so you've got about 7.2 grams per 100 but again you i mean you can easily have more than 100 grams easy to just to sit and eat the whole bag but when you're eating these sort of things i tend to just give myself a small handful like you know maybe a 30 gram serving or something like that so they're also another good snack if you want something salty. And I mean, these sort of things are really good if you're sitting watching a movie and everyone's eating snack food and you just feel like a little bit of something. This, these are the sort of snacks you can have. The other things that I really like are pork crackles. These are just like, like a chip, but they're a pork crackle. So the crackling off a of pork made into chips. It's extremely low in carbohydrates the whole bag's got less than 0.25 of a gram of carbs so you can eat the whole bag of that and there'll be nothing in it the other thing that i've recently discovered and i absolutely love are these roasted seaweed snacks they're not that cheap i think they're about roughly two dollars for a packet and like you're only getting five grams worth of like seaweed in them but they're just seaweed sheets basically the seaweed sheets that you can wrap your sushi in but they're in a snack form that you can just eat yourself so this is the sea salt flavored one and this is the sriracha flavor this is um quite spicy even though it says mild but it is quite spicy but really really delicious and they're good if you just feel like you know you just feel like a little something but you don't feel like a whole meal and you just want a little snack and in each one of these, there's 1.5 in that one and 1.1 in that one. 
So they're from Coles, obviously. And yeah, they're something I've just recently discovered that are keto friendly. And also we've got here some, what we like to do with these, if we don't feel like having a full meal, we will often make ourselves like a bit of an antipasto plate. So we'll use some green olives, which have got like, I mean, most olives have got no uh, carbohydrate in them. Just be careful what they're actually marinating in. Like, I mean, you want them marinating in either oil or um, like a vinegar solution. So, but just check the labels, but these ones are good. These are less than one less than 0.1 of a gram of carbs per serving, which is about five olives. So they are really good. The other thing I really like are these cucumber dill pickles or dill cucumbers basically. Now these you have to be very careful of because some of them are very high in sugar because they're actually added sugar. But this version is basically just cucumbers, water, vinegar and salt and dill. So these have very low carbs. Um, you can see there per 100 gram is only 1.3 grams of carbs. Uh, there is another version in a tin. I can't remember the brand. I'm sure it's like an overseas brand, like a Greek brand or something like that. They are also really nice um, because there's, they're not sweet um, pickles. They're actually salty ones. So they're really good. Even if you put some tuna, canned tuna on top of one, cut one in half, put some tuna on top, really nice snack. Same with capers. If you like the taste of capers, they've got nothing in them either. Um, I usually just put those with the antipasto plate and same with artichoke hearts marinated in oil. There's not a lot of carbs in those either. Uh, you, you just need to see how much you're actually eating of them. Um, and then, like I said, tuna, this is a chili flavored tuna. It'll have a little bit more carbs than just plain tuna. But again, the whole tin is less than one gram of carb. So if you stick to tuna in oil, tuna in chili or tuna in um, spring water, if you can eat it, I personally don't like it or tuna in brine. They're the best ones to stick to. If you're going to get any of the flavored versions, if they're in like a tomato sauce or something like that, again, just check your um, your carb content. So I mainly try and stick to as little carbs as possible, but I, I'd make sure I'm not going over 20 carbs a day. That's pretty much my limit. And I don't actually count the carbs that I'm doing. I just gauge it by what I'm eating. Like, you know, if I have a pork crackles, I know there's nothing in that, so that doesn't count. Um, I know if I'm eating the chicken, there's one gram in that whole packet. So, okay, that's cool. I've had one gram in that. And that's pretty much how I work it. I don't, um, I don't count calorie, uh, count carbohydrates or anything like that. I just do it in my head, basically. If I, if you stick to these sort of foods that are all low in carbs, you don't have to worry about it. But if you are going to have something a little bit higher, then just be aware of what you're eating. So yeah, those are just some quick and easy snack type foods that you can eat while you're doing keto, either as like a meal in itself, or if you do just wanna have a little snack, or if even if you're going to a party and you're not sure if they're gonna have any appropriate snack foods for you, make yourself up a little lunchbox with these sort of things so you've got something to nibble on. I mean, that's, that's something I would do, not that we really go to any parties, but you know, if I knew I was going to a party and they, they weren't gonna have, you know, the types of food I could eat, I'd just make myself up a little lunchbox and take some of my own stuff. And that way you can still feel like you're eating and not missing out or, you know, not having too many carbs either. So, yeah, I hope that's um, given you some ideas of the types of foods you can be enjoying while you're doing keto. So I just wanted to quickly show you here how I made those cheese crackers. So basically you want to get a cookie sheet tray and line it with some baking paper. Then you get your cheese slices, whatever cheese slices you like. Not the processed cheese though, get like real cheese. And we're going to break each slice into quarters, so four little squares. And then just line them up on your cookie sheet, leaving a little bit of a gap between each one.
And once you've filled up your cookie sheet, we're going to put them under the grill. And you've got to just keep your eye on these because, yeah, they can burn pretty quickly. So you only want to put them under the grill for a few minutes. You'll see they start to bubble. This is good. Keep them in there until they just start to turn a little bit golden. While the cheese crackers are cooking, I thought I'd make a little bit of a guacamole dip to go with the cheese crackers. So I'm just slicing up an avocado. And I'm just going to use a tiny bit of this guacamole spice mix. It is a little bit high in carbs, but I'm only going to be using a tiny amount. And I mean, there's like, yeah, even if you use the whole packet, you wouldn't be having many carbs per serve. But um, yeah, I'm only just going to put a little bit of a sprinkle in just to put some flavoring in. Normally, you'd use this whole packet for one, I think one or two avocados. So I just sprinkle a little bit of that in there as well as adding some salt and pepper and then just mash it all together. So by this time all your cheese crackers will be done. So take them out of the grill, let them dry and cool down and they should harden up to be like a crunchy cracker and they are delicious to have with the guacamole. I find them a little bit salty to eat by themselves but when you're having them with guacamole or maybe like some sort of sour cream dip or something like that I think they're really really delicious and these you can store in an airtight container for later as well they'll store quite nicely in the fridge so there you go there's a nice healthy keto lunch some cheese crackers with a guacamole dip now I wouldn't typically eat all of this to myself uh, we pretty much shared it between the whole family and it was really really nice well, I hope that gave you just some ideas on the types of foods that are keto friendly if you are joining me on this journey. And without further ado, let's go weigh in. Yeah, so I thought considering this is my week four update, so it's been basically a month since I've been doing keto, I thought I would also do a measurement and full body shot as well each month so i'll do my normal weekly weigh-ins every week obviously and then each month at the end of the month i will do a full body shot and measurement so i can sort of see if there's any progress in that area as well so i'll do my measurements now and i'll give you guys a full body shot like of you know front back and sides basically and yeah we'll see if there's any progress in that department and excuse my bleach stain t-shirt, it's my cereal chiller t-shirt and I just can't bear to part with it. Like <laughs> as, as crappy as it looks, I just it's just one of my most comfy and favourite t-shirts. So yeah, um, if that bothers you, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I don't care. So we'll do the measurement first. So I'll do my waist measurements. So... What have we got here? I'll do the inches as well as the thing because I think I had 50 inches on my waist last time. So what have I got there? 48, wow, okay. And that's pretty loose, 48. I'm not gonna suck it in because I'll just do a pretty loose 48. So that's, that's two inches, wow. My belly used to be out there this um one month ago that's crazy okay because i don't i definitely don't feel like i've gotten much smaller um it to me i feel the same so 48 inches on my waist and we'll do the hips now because i want to get in try and get in the biggest part the chunkiest part of my butt as well as because this is my problem area like this little what do they call it I'm not going to say the word because it's not a nice word, but <laughs> my gut. <laughs> Got there, 50, 53. I don't know what it was before, actually. I thought it was about 53 before, so not much progress in that area. About 53. So that equivalent, so 50 inches is equivalent to 127 on the tape. And 53 is equivalent to 135 on the tape. So 135 centimetres. So I, I have in my mind, 
I'm thinking in my mind that it was 53 around my hips last time I did it as well. So yeah, I don't think that one's changed too much. But two inches off my off my waist is pretty good. I'm happy with that. I will take that for sure. Um, and yeah, so now I'll do the full body shots. Um, so I I know I should probably do one in like a bikini type thing, but I really don't think I'm, <laughs> I'm that I'm that um, confident to do that. So. These will have to do. So here's my front, my side. I feel like this part has gone down a little bit. Um, to me, it feels like it's gone down, and it's <laughs> but it feels like it's all like just dropped into the bottom part. So <laughs> anyway, that's my back. Um, what I might do is I might do a bikini shot of me now before I lose much more weight. Um, not like a string bikini but you know some pants and a bra shot and I'll just save that until I'm at my goal or where I want to be and then I'll probably be game enough to show it because it's like well that's not really me anymore whereas I think I'd be a bit embarrassed to do a bikini shot now and everyone going oh well, that's what her body looks like under there like yeah so I might do it I'll do it per for a privately and, and save the photo so then when I do reach my goal I will then do hey this is where I started and this is what I am now so yeah I might do that so yeah I will um I think it's yeah and uh, I'm happy with that two inches and and the scales are still dropping so I think it's all good Oh, I was pretty happy with that weight loss, I must say, but admittedly, I reckon most of it's my hair. <laughs> All my hair got cut off, so most of that weight is probably gone in hair, I'd say. Oh, God. So, yeah, you're going to have to excuse my head for a few months until it all starts to grow back. It's just so short at the moment. I reckon about a kilo of hair is gone. So that's probably why the weight, the scales went down so much this week. So yeah, I'm pretty, pretty happy with this week's weight loss. That was a huge jump. So yeah, and even my measurements, like I was quite surprised how much I've actually lost around my waist. I don't, I don't physically feel like I've lost that much in size, but yeah, well, the measurements don't lie, I guess. So got to be happy with that. If you are joining me on my journey, don't forget to let me know how you guys are going in the comments below. Hopefully you are doing really well and are staying positive. It's looking like to be another good week ahead, I think. And so far, so good. No major slip ups, no cravings, no nothing really. I've just been pretty much sticking sticking to it well i hope you enjoyed this week's keto vlog keep up your journey keep staying positive and i'll see you guys all next week